Hello, and thank you for joining us for another one of Sporty's how-to videos. Today we're going to cover how to configure the NFS Cirrus side yoke with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. We'll begin by heading on over to the controls page, and you'll see that it recognizes the hardware, but it doesn't understand what inputs we want to connect with which outputs. So we're going to manually have to plug those in. We'll begin by running a sensitivity test. And I'm going to roll the yoke to the left, OK, and to the right. And that'll be our roll. And then I'll push forward, and I'll pull back, and that will be our pitch. So pitch is left axis Y, roll left axis X. Let's go ahead and apply those to what happens in the simulator. We'll head on over to all the options and go to Flight Control Services, Primary Control Surfaces, and we'll start with the ailerons axes. And from our testing, we're going to designate that as left axis X. And you're actually able to go ahead and title this profile, which is helpful if you want different sensitivities or configurations for a Cessna, um, for a Piper Cub, or for a Cirrus. And let's go ahead and test full left and full right. Okay, reacts the way I'd like. Next, we're going to do the elevator axes. And we know that will be left axes Y. And let's go ahead and test it by pulling full back and pushing full forward. Okay, we've got ailerons and elevator taken care of. Next, we're going to move on to a control that I think is undervalued in the simulator. It's going to be the toggle parking brake control. I'm going to go ahead and set that as the number one button on this yoke, which is where the push to talk button is. So we'll scroll down to toggle parking brakes and apply that to button one. And checking it. All right, that works as expected. Next, we're going to go to the Autopilot Disconnect button. And as you can see, there are a lot of options when it comes to Autopilot. I'm going to quickly filter through some of these. Uh, the search bar really helps when looking for something and kind of sifting through all the hundreds of options you have here. And as we get about halfway through the page, we should come to the Autopilot Toggle Master. There we go. We'll set that to button two, and we'll test it. OK, operating as is. Next, we're going to move on to the hat switch. And at first, we're going to set this up for trim control. So let's go ahead and get rid of a couple of these categories. We'll go to trimming trip. OK. Now I want to go ahead and set the elevator trim nose down to the top of the hat switch, which is number three. So when I'm pushing on the top part or the 12 o'clock, if you're thinking of it as a clock, that'll be elevator trim nose down. That's correct, just like in the airplane. And then let's go ahead and do the opposite for the six o'clock position on the hat switch, which is number four for elevator trim up. OK, operates as I'd like. Next, we're going to do rudder trim left, which I'm going to make button number five, the nine o'clock position to the left. OK, and then lastly, rudder trim right, which I'm sure, as you can guess, is going to be number six. Correct. OK, so now, just like in a typical Cirrus, we have the elevator trim and rudder trim all in the hat switch. Now something that's really great, I believe, about the Cirrus side yoke is by depressing button number one and using the same hat switch, it gives you point of view inputs to the simulator. So it's kind of like a shift key on a keyboard. You now have secondary uh, performance of keys. We're going to go ahead and set a couple views using the method I just outlined. Now you can customize these camera preferences to whatever your heart desires. Uh, for sake of time and my preference, I'm just going to go ahead and set it to the external views. So I'm going to close out a couple of these subcategories. 
and here's our external views. I like the external quick views. And again, I recommend experimenting, seeing which views you like, which work best for you, which don't. So here we have quick view left. And I'm going to set that to the 9 o'clock position or button number, or I'm sorry, point of view left. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that to the point of view left arrow. Got that set. And OK. Let's go to external quick view rear. And I'm going to go to point of view down. Oh, put the wrong one in. I want this to be point of view down, like 6 o'clock, okay. Here's our quick view right. We're going to make that point of view right. And then lastly, external quick view, point of view up, or 12 o'clock position. All right, we're going to apply and save these new commands, ever important. And then let's go ahead and test them out in the airplane. We're going to head to our home airport here at Claremont County, India 6 Niner. Let's go ahead and fly. All right, so here we are in the airplane, engine started on the runway. We're going to go ahead and head on out to the external view of the airplane, which uh, let's push the end button on a keyboard. That is the default setting, and here we are. Now, I want you to focus on the trim indicator on the bottom right half of the screen. You'll notice it's at point one. As I push on our hat, trim is in motion, so it's working as it should, trimming down. And now we're trimming back up nose up that is. Now I'm going to push down on button number one or the push to talk and move the same keys on the hat switch and you'll notice our view now changes rather than trim changing. So this is a real benefit to only having a few keys on this yoke. You can still configure quite a few commands. So I hope this was informative to uh, helping you in your flight simulator setup. We appreciate any type of feedback you can give us in the YouTube comments, and we'll continue to add more videos as new products come into our line. We thank everyone for their time, and happy flying.